You know how folks love rolling their eyes at Justin Bieber? I mean, dude's been hated for the past few years. But it feels like it was just yesterday that he was just that blonde kid from YouTube that record labels couldn't grab fast enough. Then fast forward several years later, and he's THE Justin Bieber, most popular pop star in the world. And man, did it become easy to either hate on him or just brush him off like yesterday's news. But ever wonder what crap he went through to become like this? You know, it wasn't always glitz and glam for Justin. Sure, he skyrocketed to fame, but then the early 2010s came along and BAM! A whole new Bieber. He was suddenly in the news for all the wrong reasons. Getting into fights, having a bit of a diva attitude. It was like he was trying his best to tick every box in a stereotypical child star meltdown checklist. Now, I'm not here to write off or even excuse this bad behavior, but there's another side to this story. Dude's been through some seriously uncomfortable situations in public, and man were some of those on-camera moments straight up cringe. Why do you want to know the sex talk from a 15-year-old boy? That's pretty weird. Let's set the scene with James Corden for a sec. Like, there's this bit with James Corden getting all up in Justin's personal space, hand on his back and everything, and it's just off. Like, personal space who? Bieber's face is like, bro, back off but Corden keeps pushing. You so look at him, look at him, what a beautiful face, all right. And don't get me started on Katy Perry. She's there, grabbing a feel, and being like, sorry, Selena. Like what? Justin looked like he wanted to be anywhere but there. And then Ms. I kissed a girl herself, Katy Perry, goes full hands on Bieber, literally grabbing his butt and mouthing a sorry Selena to the camera. I mean, he did try to play it off by saying something which made some people think he was okay with this behavior, but man, the look on his face said it all. Now, talk show hosts getting handsy seemed to be a trend because even David Letterman, the legend himself, couldn't resist touching up on Bieber. During a 2012 sit-down, Letterman felt some type of way about Justin's tats and decided to play the stern dad role. You know, I got belief. Hey, 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 hey. But come on, Dave. Grabbing his arm? Not cool. Props to Letterman, though, he later manned up and apologized. Then there's Leah Ramini on The Talk. This segment was, well, Cringy doesn't even begin to cover it. Justin had to practically shout at her to back off, and then she tried to corner him into a super weird and inappropriate would you rather question in front of kids, no less. Justin stood his ground. Big ups for that. Speaking of radio interviews, ever heard of Mojo in the Morning? During a session, Shannon Murphy, the host, veered the convo into X-rated territory despite Justin's obvious discomfort. Earlier in the chat. Have you, has your Hang mom given you a sex talk yet? I mean, like, I, I really, like, I really don't want to have that conversation with my mother. Yeah. Like, I've, I've kind of had it with my with my father. You want to hear, oh, really? Oh, See, my mother? parents my parents never gave me the sex talk. Okay. So, why don't you give me the sex talk? I, I really, me. I feel uncomfortable right now. Oh. Why do you want to know the sex talk from a 15-year-old boy? That's pretty weird. Justin's teen hormones were on display, flirting with Shannon. But then she started describing his actions live on air. It got messy real quick. I mean, he was a kid, and she was an adult. Lines got blurred, and it was all sorts of messy. And don't even get me started on L.A. Reid. He, the bigwig who signed Justin, dropped some weird comments about Justin's looks, describing him as beautiful like a woman and going on and on about his face and hair. Uh, okay? I mean, Bieber was a cute kid, but some of those comments, major side eye. But the grand prize for cringe-inducing behavior goes to Jenny McCarthy. At the American Music Awards, she didn't just cross a line, she basically erased it. She got super handsy with Justin, and his shocked response was, I feel violated right now. I feel violated right now. But that's not even the wildest part. Bro, this was painful to watch. I took the opportunity in the window, considering I'll never get to do it again, and kind of molested him. It'd be like cougar ring. Homegirl straight up admits to her behavior on Twitter, like it was some sort of badge of honor. Honestly, it's chilling to think what might have gone down when the cameras weren't rolling. Look, the point here isn't to excuse any bad behavior on Bieber's part, but with all the wild stuff that was going down in plain sight, you gotta wonder how much more he had to deal with behind closed doors. Everyone's got a story and sometimes it's darker than you think. So here's the thing. Many child stars go down the rabbit hole, and our boy Justin was no exception. Teenagers experiment. It's a thing. We've all done some wacky stuff as teens, but add in some intense stress and a media microscope, and it's a recipe for disaster. Justin wasn't just experimenting, he was trying to escape, and oh boy did he serve up some drama. 2013? Wild year for him. 
TMZ posted a pic of Justin with what looked like a blunt. Talk about a plot twist from the baby days. No charges or anything, but the damage was done. That wholesome choir boy image? Crumbling. Fast forward to his 19th birthday. Homeboy was in England, ready to party it up. But here's where the plot thickens. All little tweet tees from Justin about a big night and boom, he's splashing 8,000 pounds for a bash at the Cirque du Soir Club in Soho. Apparently some of his guests were underage, and so naturally you wouldn't expect them getting entry into a club, so it wasn't really a surprise when they got the boot from the club. But Justin being Justin, was having none of it. He ranted on Insta about the club's weak ass excuse. Ha! <laughs> classic teen rebellion. People were all up in arms about this. Like, dude, you're not in your backyard. Respect the rules. And just when we thought the T couldn't get any hotter, he reportedly showed up two hours late for his O2 Arena show. Why? Apparently our man was too lazy and locked himself gaming in his dressing room. Fans were livid, as they should be, right? Oh, but things got way worse when he snapped at a paparazzo. There was a video. It was pure chaos, and it went viral. I mean, it's like, the pop wants drama. Justin gives drama. Then everyone's shocked there's drama. But Justin ended up taking to Twitter to apologize and vent. But it doesn't even end there. Later that day, another run-in with a photographer while he was skateboarding. Justin's entourage got a tad aggressive, rushed the guy, choked him, and then swiped the camera and took the memory card like it was a telenovela episode. And the hits just kept coming. It's one thing to be on the receiving end of bad behavior. JB wasn't exactly innocent either. I mean, we're talking about everything from peeing in a mop bucket to sparking an entire revolution in Colombia and spitting on his neighbor. It was crazy, man. Now, I ain't here to judge, but it's clear that, for a while there, Bieber was giving as good as he got. Does that excuse his behavior? Nah, but it gives a little perspective. When you're constantly in the public eye, things get messy and sometimes that messiness turns into a whole bunch of drama. But hey, that's the price of fame, right? So by now, we've painted a picture of Bieber as this kid with some serious privilege issues, right? And then BAM, 2014 hits, and a video surfaces where a younger Biebs is caught making some pretty tasteless racist jokes, like kid used the N-word multiple times. And if you thought, oh, young and dumb, hold up. Another video pops up where he takes his song, One Less Lonely Girl, and switches out the lyrics to some truly ugly racist words. I mean, come on. He later came forward with an apology that boiled down to, yeah, I messed up, big time. But for many, that was the final straw. Just when you thought things couldn't get any wilder, Bieber decided to double down on his bad boy image with that infamous DUI in Miami. Bieber, fresh from partying at a club in Miami Beach, jumps into a yellow Lambo. His crew blocks off the streets and off he goes, drag racing against singer Khalil in a red Ferrari. Sounds like a scene from Fast and Furious, but it's real life and real dumb. Cops pull him over and surprise, surprise, he's intoxicated. They toss him in jail and that smiling mugshot of his goes viral. Later, tests reveal he's got a cocktail of THC and Xanax in his system. Some people were fed up. So much so that over a quarter of a million people signed a petition to kick him out of the US. The Obama administration, however, gave it the old thanks but no thanks treatment. But behind the scenes, it was darker than we thought. Rumors flew about Justin's increasing drug use with whispers that he's been spotted buying in some of LA's riskiest neighborhoods. It's tough seeing someone, especially so young, spiraling like that. It's easy to shrug it off as just another rich kid problem, but there's a person behind those headlines. He once admitted that his substance abuse started off casual but quickly spiraled as the pressures of fame bore down on him. The dude was hurting. Still, as they say, the show must go on, and Bieber did just that, collaborating with Skrillex and giving us bops like Where Are You Now and What Do You Mean, and the aptly titled Sorry. He dropped the Purpose album and it was a smash hit, but you could see the strain in his eyes. His later music like Yummy, let's just say it wasn't everybody's jam. In the years that followed, he tried to rebuild. But his public image, once that of the squeaky clean kid with the iconic hair flip, was forever changed. Some would say tarnished. Interviews, like his heart to heart with Zane Lowe, showed a vulnerable side. He teared up talking about Billie Eilish, likely seeing a bit of his younger self in her. The thought of Billie going through all the sexual harassment he went through makes me want to cry. Today, he's older, hopefully wiser, and focused on his family. But that bratty pop star rap, it still haunts him. No matter what he does, he can't fully shake it. The crazy thing is, at the start of it all, he was just a kid with a dream. The world built him up, put him on a pedestal, and then watched as it all crumbled. It makes you wonder, is all the fame and fortune really worth it?